I'm going to call the regular meeting to order. It's what day is today? Thursday, Thursday. the <laughs> October the fifth. Yeah. Um, all right. So first thing is to set adjust agenda. I need to add an item number four. Item four. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Which is select board to authorize the town manager to sign the SE group proposal to complete phase two of the pedestrian bridge and park project. Be revised, is that it? I don't know. Um, do we want to add an executive session um, personnel to? I, I responded I and said yeah. 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 Do we want? To... I thought you were going to be late. I am. Is it possible <laughs> that Danny will turn up? Or he's no, not I don't think so. But he's, he said he's good. Oh, okay. So, with okay. Yeah. Did you add an agenda item? We had an item four. Phase two bridge. Yep. It's because it was revised? Yeah. Okay. We're also going to um, add, after old business, we're going to add an um, executive session, um, which is personnel related. To include. to include the town manager. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Keyboard doesn't work. All right. Anything else? Something. No. Could somebody make a motion to approve that? So moved. <laughs> All right. All in favor of approving the uh, adjusted agenda, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Next communication from the audience. We have someone on Zoom. Hi, Monica. Would you like to say anything? Uh, hello. Hi. 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 How are you all doing? Good. Okay. I wasn't able to hear um, what you had just said. I heard Monica. That was all I heard. Oh, good thing I said your name. So we're. This is our communication from the audience section of our meeting, and uh, we don't have you as a, uh, a like an item on our agenda. So I'm assuming you wanted to communicate something with us. Okay. So, uh, so you ready for that now? You're saying. Yep. Okay. Great. Um, so good after, uh, good evening. My name is Monica Miles. I'm a public affairs specialist with the U.S. Small Business Administration, and the SBA wants to make sure that um, everyone in your uh, county is aware that homeowners, renters, businesses, and nonprofits uh, that were affected by the uh, storms and floods that occurred back on July 7th through the 21st of this year can apply to a U to the um, U.S. Small Business Administration for a low interest rate loan if uh, they were affected by the disaster. If um, any type of funds from insurance proceeds or from FEMA or a similar um, type program uh, is not sufficient in order for the person or the business or nonprofit to recover from the disaster, they can apply to the U.S. Small Business Administration for a loan. Although it's called the Small Business Administration when it comes to disasters, uh, the agency can give loans to homeowners, renters, businesses of all sizes, and nonprofit organizations. Uh, the uh, loans do not accrue an interest for the first uh, year of the loan, and the first payment on the loan is not due for a year um, later, um, one year after the first proceeds are received um, by the borrower. In addition, um, the uh, loans do have low interest rates for a homeowner or somebody who's renting their home. Uh, the interest rate is 2.5%. Uh, for a nonprofit, it's 2.375%. And for a business, it's 4%. Uh, those are the uh, lowest rates they, that uh, each one of those loans can be. And with respect to a homeowner, somebody who uh, owns their home, if the um, home structure and the grounds um, were damaged by the uh, storm, they can get a loan up to $200,000. Uh, 
then with respect to the personal property, the person who owns their home or renting their home in the county can get a loan for their personal property up to $40,000, and that can include a vehicle as well. With respect to a business and a nonprofit, the maximum loan amount is $2 million uh, for all types of um, loan proceeds that the um, applicant could apply for. Um, people and um, businesses and nonprofits do not have to wait to hear from their insurance company um, before they can apply for a loan. Uh, they can do so now. And then with respect to the property, uh, a loan for property damage, again, for the building or for the uh, contents or a vehicle or something of that nature, the deadline for that is next week on October 12th. Um, so we're really trying to um, get this information um, back out to the public. Uh, most loans um, usually have a term of up to th um, 30 years uh, for repayment. Uh, and again, if um, somebody takes out a loan, um, again, no interest accruing for the first year, if they want to um, pay that uh, loan off um, earlier, such as at the, uh, right at the end of the first year before the first payment is due, they could do so and have use of the funds without any, in, incurring any interest whatsoever. Uh, this um, SBA does ask for uh, collateral if the loan exceeds $25,000. However, if the applicant doesn't have collateral, then they can still um, apply for the loan. That uh, will not terminate the situation. Um, there's no application fee to apply for the loan. And if the um, applicant later determines that they don't need the loan or uh, they don't have to go forward with it, there's no requirement to do so. Uh, the, uh, once the applicant uh, uh, submits all the paperwork uh, that the agency has requested, the SBA tries to give them an answer as to whether or not the loan was approved within a period of two to three weeks. And once, and if they decide to go forward with the loan, once they've signed the loan closing documents and had an opportunity to review them, of course, uh, the agency tries to get them the first draw on their loan uh, amount within about five business days. Um, with respect to businesses and nonprofits, uh, they can also apply for what's called an economic injury disaster loan. Um, that's a loan where um, the business or the nonprofit um, had a, a decrease in um, its sales, its expected revenue, um, and they uh, attribute it directly to the disaster. Um, and as a result of that decrease in their revenue, they're not able to pay their ordinary and necessary bills. So they can apply for the economic injury disaster loan, which is also called a working capital loan. And uh, that's designed um, to uh, ensure that the uh, business or nonprofit is able to um, keep up with its uh, financial obligations during the uh, disaster period. Now that particular loan, again, is different, so uh, the deadline for that is not until next year, which is April 15th, 2024. Uh, because sometimes it takes businesses and nonprofit organizations a period of a few months in order um, for them to actually notice that there uh, has been a decline in their revenue and to attribute it to the uh, disaster. Anybody wanting to apply for a loan? Um, can go to the SBA's website, sba.gov forward slash disaster, or they can call the SBA for additional information at 1-800-659-2955, or for the hearing impaired, call 711. Um, or they can go to disasterloanassistance.sba.gov, and they'll find an application um, to apply for the loan there as well. And as well, um, there are still um, some uh, temporary recovery centers um, in the state of Vermont. Um, there's none in your county um, at this time, but uh, if anybody wants to call the SBA and get um, the most recent update on that information, um, they can do so again at 1-800-659-2955. And that's pretty much it uh, regarding the, the loan. Great. Thank you. Thank you for the update and for reminding people the deadline for individuals is October 12th, you said. Yes, yes, October 12th. All right. Great. Any, any questions for Monica while we have her? Thank you for reaching out, Monica.
Okay, thank you, and thanks for allowing me to uh, participate today. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. All right. All right. You all take care. You Bye. too. Okay. Um, all right. So next up is select board to approve minutes from regular select board meeting September twenty first. I can motion to approve the meeting minutes of September twenty first as written. Second. Any discussion <coughs> changes? That looks good. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Minutes approved. Um, uh, next up is library trustee report. We have Jody Lou Smith here. Um, Jody, we turn the floor over to you. I think actually, yeah. Um, I was asked to come give an update. You were. we're everybody was curious about what's happening. The road. Yeah, we have a restart date of October 16th. Um, we have confirmation from the subs, at least the four subs who need to be there for the opening work. Um, and we expect um, that we'll start seeing equipment moving this next week um, because there'll be cleanup on the site and preparation to get ready. Um, we are still um, talking to the builders on final kind of numbers, but, um, and we're also talking to funders, so it's all falling into place, but we will, um, our new target completion date is August of next year. That is the update. What else did you want to ask about? Um, how so the general gist of the change is to <clears throat> that the new addition isn't going to have to go as low into the ground and that's going to allow yeah, the so building to stay above. I think I told you last time I was here that we decided to raise the building because and um, got a variance to use a lula instead of an elevator, but in order to not have a giant ramp on the front, we essentially redesigned the building and that's partly why we've had a much longer delay than I thought last time I was here is that it turned out we had to doing the redesign of the floor levels meant we had to re-estimate most aspects of the wood of uh, uh, one level um, that got a foot shorter needed to get re-estimated and then it needed to go through structural review and get a new structural design and it needed a new civil design and so all those design pieces have taken a while. Those came in about three weeks ago, the last of them. And then the builders have been sending out um, new specs to their subs to get new estimates. So you don't have all the estimates back yet? They're not <clears throat> totally compiled yet, but they're close. Do you have an idea of the increase in your cost? <coughs> well, there's a whole bunch of allowances in there for unknowns. And so, um, but um, it's looking like it will be somewhere between 200 and 400 additional. We do have contingency money built in, and we are, as I said, talking to funders. Um, one of our funders is willing to consider an additional grant to. Oh, great. Yeah. So, um, and then we have a few other options we will pursue, but um, it's, well, that as, you know, actual cost, you know, when they budget, when they estimate, they give you the biggest possible number, and then as actual funds are spent, those get reallocated, whatever isn't used gets reallocated toward the front end, so. Um, it, you know, we already knew that we were going to have a little bit more finishing to do, and so we're, but we have now better part of a year to raise that additional money for finishing. So, we should be fine. Good. So, moving forward on the 16th, you said? Or? Yeah. yeah. That's great. Thanks. Yeah, we're, we'd love to get some nice weather um, into November because it would save us money on ground heating for sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So the sooner we we'll, can, we'll get it. 
I was telling Tom today we're not going to have winter until the end of December. Sounds good. Oh boy. Yeah. <laughs> well, it doesn't sound good for us. Famous last words. Famous last words. We're going to go from 80 to minus 80. <laughs> well, well, thank you for the update. Thanks for being here. Yeah, sure. <clears throat> Jody, it occurs to me that when you're done with this, you have a book in you <laughs> entitled The Library Project from Hell. <laughs> I already have a blog oh, come post on. called. It's not that bad. It's not. It's not that bad. It's called Five Reasons Not to Build a Library. <laughs> no, we'll get it. We'll be there. It will be um, very sweet when it finally gets used. Yeah, great. Thank you. Well, thanks so much. No problem. Okay. Uh, next up is Town Manager Report. Okay. Yep. Yep. Um, <clears throat> So we started, um, the state started their sewer line inspection project today. Um, that was a, a, something that the state took on with the towns that were affected by the flooding. So that's at no cost to the type of taxpayers or the hardware repairs. Oh, so this is not, this is separate from the, oh yeah, I was thinking water line connections. This is different. That's the lead service. Yeah. 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 This is. This is a, since the, since the flood, yeah. um, the state came in, wastewater division came in and said, we want to inspect the sewer lines. We're not going to put the cost on the ratepayers. We're going to contract it out. And we signed an MOU with the state. And they're doing the project, and they'll report the findings back to us. Do they put a camera in them, or yeah. they? Okay. they can camera them and clean them. Yeah. Yep. Really? Yep. So this is this is safe. Wow. Yeah. Yep. That's nice. Yeah, it is nice. Yeah. We should send them a thank you note. We will. Okay. Yeah. We'll, we'll do a Christmas basket. Okay. Good. Yeah. Some some items from the wastewater plant. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then uh, the, the substantial damage uh, percentages are coming back, starting to come back from the state. Um, and the wastewater plant was, this is all things wastewater, by the way. Okay, all right. Because um, that's been the consumption of my time lately. Uh, is greater than 50% damage, uh, which is, that's kind of what we need, or not really what we need. We knew that was coming. Uh, we're going to have to do uh, things like raise the foundation or flood proof, um, all things that we know we need to do, but it's good when somebody else is saying that we need to do it. They're verifying what we know to right. be true. Yeah. Um, so FEMA was here yesterday. The, uh, I met with the PDMG, which is the, the grants manager uh, program, grants manager. Um, projects are being lumped in. We've, we've created, I created a disaster, a, a, Disaster inventory or um, damage inventory, I call it disaster inventory. So it's a damage, a DI. I have everything listed on the spreadsheet. Uh, we went through and clumped projects together. So we've clumped all of the road projects together and we should be seeing um, reimbursements um, with some of the early emergency stuff uh, start to trickle in. To date, we've spent 460000 on uh, the flood emergency. That's uh, the most recent number. What that doesn't include um, is our, this is cash going out. Um, what that doesn't include is our, our equipment time that we can still, that we will bill for, um, our material, and um, our overtime. So FEMA doesn't reimburse us for our regular time because we would be here working anyways. Um, Tom's overtime. Isn't it over? Uh, and then, so that's um, that's good. So we'll hope to start recovering some of that, those funds over the winter months now that there's no government shutdown. Yes. You have 45 <laughs> days. Right. right. Yeah, you have 45 days. So we'll get it hopefully within the next 45 days. No. Some of it. Who right. knows? Um, and then I do have some old, I, there's some stuff I want to bring up in old business. Okay. Um, rather than tie up my management report with that. Okay. Um, stuff we've talked about. Yep. Uh, it's basically School Street and East Hardwick. Okay. All right. So. What? Another word. 
Alright, you on. Well, the thing, I'm going to start bringing a lot of stuff up in old business, so it's not to tie up the meeting, but it elongates the meeting at the end, because I really like the meeting, so. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, just one comment that um, I think we're, the town is fortunate that we came into this flood in a financial position where we're able to cover our out-of-pocket costs, Yeah. because clearly, you don't get reimbursed right away for right. any of this stuff. Right. And we were lucky we didn't have to scramble to go borrow. We're not, you know, we're not. No one's banging on our door. Right. Yep. That's a good position to be in. Some towns had to go borrow right away. Right. That's so. Not yet. We still got a couple more products. Yeah, we do. <laughs> well, right. Yes. Yeah. 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 We're, this is just for emergency repairs. Right. We still have bridges. I know. You know we still have a lot coming. East Main Street Bridge, um, South the South Main Street retaining wall. Um, yeah. A lot of stuff. That's bigger. A lot of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. But that will happen over the course of years. I mean, this was the stuff we needed to have happen right away in order to open roads and get yeah. people connected. What would be ideal, possibly, is to lump, try to lump all these projects. Well, not along them all, but some of the major bridge, the river crossings, box culverts, and bridges, is to bump them into uh, a, a project in, say, in the summer, mm -hmm. and get them all done, and bond short-term borrow for that, and mm -hmm. then get reimbursed by FEMA for it. That's but we have a little while to right. map that out because right. we wouldn't do it until next summer anyway. Well, we need to get we need the hydro hydrologic studies. Yeah. Right, but we need we'll we'll probably get some guidance on how to do that. Yeah, but that's typically I think that's how it's done. Cool. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you. Yeah. Next up, road foreman report. Tom, what's uh, it, are you getting ready for winter? Yes. Uh, it's be today. I think we can mark it down as we are all done our flood. So uh, we did the last part of the pavement today, like uh, that we had for flood work left with like Center Road, Browns Hill, Mackville, stuff like that. So we've got those patched up. Belfry, we've got that all patched up and, and done. Uh, they're not great, but they're all filled in for the winter since we got no response back from our pavement crew. Still? Uh, still, yeah. Uh, so, as far as I know, uh, we sat down the other day, we were thinking if there's any places else that we could hit gravel from the flood, but we got everything all covered and that we know of, that we could remember anyway. So everything has been all re-graveled where it did flood. Everything is all back open, everything is, is all patched back up, so everything is completely done in our minds in ways that what we could do for what happened with the flood. Emergency repair. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so those are all done. Uh, I did get late word this afternoon. I have a total be yet uh, for uh, Hart Farms Road there. They will have a bridge for us okay. for that temporary bridge. Temporary bridge, just yeah. just like the one they did over, did over to Fisher Follies. Yeah. It needs uh, to be wide enough for farm equipment. Uh, it ain't gonna be that wide. It's only gonna be like 13 feet wide. So. How much longer this will last? I mean, they can get. You know, <clears throat> Farm tractor through just on the new wheels and stuff, track trail track and stuff go through it. But, okay. Um, I mean, that's all they have. Yeah. Uh, so if we want to open that up and plow straight through for the winter, that's what we're going to have to do. Okay. So, unless you go, you just don't want to no, try I think, a different bridge or. No, we will. I think that's a good idea. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, but we'll be installing it, uh, save on money and stuff. So, we'll be doing that. Uh, He's got to get back to me on that when it all arrives down in Middlesex. So we can make arrangements to uh, go and pick that up. Uh, I know Opie has secured us some uh, Jersey barriers for up to East Harvick and up to Reedsboro Bend for the bridge up there to block that off for the winter. Uh, I don't know if you've been talking about the bridge at all up there in the bend or no? We, I, we just got one quote for 130000 to remove it. Yeah. And I'm the bank. And I'm the bank. It's a toss up. I mean, <clears throat> when we talked to Spencer today, I mean, you know, whether we do it or we don't, if it stays like it is all winter, great. But if it falls into the river, then we're in trouble. Because it's going to have to take it Because it will cause much jam and backup water and everything else, and it would have to come out. 
So is it the bridge itself? I thought it was behind the bridge or something. No, the bridge is abutment on yeah. the what is that? east side. It's downstream that's causing, because where the Standard Brook, is it Standard Brook? Yep. It comes it's in, down yeah. it's, it's dumped a bunch of sediment yeah. where the Lamoil comes in, yeah. and it's just backed up. And so if you look at the um, inspection report that they did two years ago, and look at the inspection report that they just did after the bridge failed, the water level is mm -hmm. a lot different. And this is right as you're trying to stand. Yeah, so there's a way around. Right. And why is Harvard doing that? It's in, it's in the hardware. Oh, it's right. Oh, look, yes. It just, yeah. It's right at that little corner. I was, we could change the town line. Because <laughs> <laughs> it changes on, on 16, and then it must change back again when you turn. It goes straight across yeah. to a point. The line yeah. straight so ahead. if you go up to Summit Hill, you know, we own to the, where the railroad tracks. If you head up Standard Mountain, oh, we the own. Oh, the right there. Yeah. yeah. We own where the old underpass used to be. Yeah. If you go to the right, go across that bridge, that one's ours. And then as you head back towards Walden, that first A frame, that's still in Harvard there. So you want a good chunk of it. Yeah. Lucky ass? Yes. <laughs> and, a, and two bridges right there. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Lucky ass. Uh, yes. <laughs> yeah, so I guess that's about it, I guess. Uh, so you're still yeah. thinking about what the plan for that bridge? Well, we, we'd still like to get some numbers. You guys like to get more quotes. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. people are just super busy right now. Yeah. yeah. So, like, Austin Construction just, they, they crammed us in to get the Fisher Falling Bridge in. Okay. Which was much appreciated. Yeah. Well, you yeah, did get up much for your so. <laughs> Good segue. Good segue. <laughs> All right, so moving right along, uh, Police Department report. Mike. Sounds like you saved a lot of money on the post, too. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> so, that's good. Um, so, that not much. The, uh, uh, I met with Vass yesterday and for Snowville stuff, and I'm kind of thinking in terms of um, getting a rescue letter, mm -hmm. and right now uh, applying for a grant for them would be a 730 split. Uh, I just think it would be something uh, that we should have around this area in case something happens. Yeah. Oh, you do? Yeah. Fire hazard. Yeah. And, yeah. Fire hazard? Okay. Yeah. All right. And it's a sled, too. Will it? Okay, all right, so never mind, scrap that. <laughs> um, and then, uh, so the only other thing is just the uh, uh, the 10th. The school is looking to uh, have a volunteer session. People that want to do, uh, uh, they want to volunteer or chaperone some dances. Nice, here you go. Okay. Oh, you're thanks, <laughs> Or do the ski program or anything like that. Now you have to be a fingerprint and you have to go through the system. So we're going to go up there at no charge, uh, get everything done that night. Because typically it's a $30 charge every time you come in. So any volunteers that want to go up and get the paperwork out of the way, uh, they're going to be up there and get that all done from, uh, I think, 5 to 6.30. I think they'll be up there. Great. So just get word out to people. That's a great service. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a huge service, Mike. As somebody who had to go all the way to Hyde Park or St. Johnsbury. So it's like that. Yeah, we do it at our office. All day long, it seems like. <laughs> I mean, so a lot of people who need that. I mean, we have a lot of volunteers and we hire a lot of people for the district, so. Mm -hmm. It's huge. For which program? For, for the school district. Yeah, yeah. just generally. So generally. So we'll, we'll try to get that done. It may take, you know, if we have a lot of volunteers up there, it may take a little bit longer. But uh, they're going to be up there getting all the paperwork squared away. We're going to get fingerprints good. This is a one and done process. Yes. You don't have to do it every year if you volunteer. Mm -hmm. uh, you yes. You do have to. Depends do it. on what level volunteer you are. Yeah. Okay. Uh, did you have to do it again for coaching this year? Um, no, next year. I think it's every four years. Is it? Yeah, there's. Your fingerprints don't change. No, your record money. Your record does. Yeah. <laughs> we can get you in between. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I have. That's all. Yeah. Okay. Great. Any questions for Mike? All right. Uh, next up is item one select board to discuss downtown parking. Somebody else needs to lead. That's why I'm so to do that. <laughs> <laughs> We talked in our last meeting about creating a task force 
for downtown parking. Okay. We just didn't assign anybody. We also talked about um, the fact that I had started sort of an organic process and that we took, I took um, some ideas that had come up in the downtown commission, our partnership to the um, planning commission. And um, so the planning commission did some, uh, made some sort of recommendations or agreed on a few things that both groups think are good ideas um, in there. Kristen, I thought Kristen had put something in our packets. Okay. We'll see when it's there. Otherwise, I'll go with my I, didn't, notes. I didn't see it all. No. no. Um, so they. Uh, so we talked about that the fact that there's no exit only sign in the village diner parking lot, the one that comes out onto Main Street. There has um, been some time. There, there are yeah. only a couple of, is it? Yeah. If it's visible now? To anybody that can read its road signs. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There's one um, leg on there. All right. Um, there, was, there was a suggestion to. Um, potentially paint the curb where there are white lines that people are disregarding the no parking in the intersection in front of the coffee shop and the, um, to paint that curb yellow to further aid in uh, expressing the need for that and then when it gets to be snowy season then maybe people will see more of that. Hard to know whether anyone will pay any attention to it without any enforcement. But um, we, uh, there was a suggestion to change the handicap um, spot that's in front, that used to be for the co-op basically, that's in the middle of the block to a 15 minute delivery zone from 8.30 to 5 or whatever, so that we could have a little bit less of the trucks pulling on top of the crosswalk and making their deliveries to the various places. Um, there's some discussion about the handicap sign, whether or not it's supposed to face uh, perpendicular or they're working on that. Well We're working on that. Te technically, it's supposed to be 45 degrees, but there's no way to put it 45 degrees. Isn't it a square post? No. So you can't put it. No, you can't well, pull out every anchor and reset everything. Well, no signs are 45 degrees. They're all 90 it's, degrees. It's the it's new. It's new stuff we're trying to work, work through right now, trying to figure out what we're going to do at this point. Okay. So. I think probably well, we should just. We can explain it. What's that? We can explain them, the sign debacle. Or do we well, <coughs> I, don't, I don't want to open that up yet until we, we have something definitive on it. Okay. Because it's, so it's hang, questionable. Hang on, but Terry, because you said there are two things there. One was maybe eliminate the. Eliminating that one as a handicap spot. The other thing was change the sign. So it's it either or, right? Like well, we don't need to adjust we the have sign. To um, the other signs will need to be adjusted because they're all facing. They're all parallel to this. So, so we, so a lot of those signs, they have to deal with that. A lot of those signs got got placed when they did the um, paving, the paving project, mm -hmm. and they followed the traffic stand, like the sign standards. Yeah. So we're we're not we're trying to get some guidance from the engineer that did the project on how those need to be. And have the standards changed? They're just, well, they placed them there for a reason, so they're following the standards. Right. So then there's state law, sure, like traffic law, that says maybe something else. So we're trying See, to. They're following professional standards, which is not aligned with state law. Correct. Kind Potentially. Of. Yeah. <clears throat> not to screw this conversation up, I'm just saying there's there's some more complexity with, with some of the signs on Main Street. But a 15 minute loading and unloading might be a good, maybe helpful, mm -hmm. help, helpful there. Yeah. Um, Is there enough space for a delivery truck to fit in there? No. If you got one, they own more parking. 
if they in order to put a truck in there. Depends on when they catch it. Well, they, yeah, I mean, they pull in there anyway. Um, there's the area that's the bump, technically the bump out for the crosswalk, which they're always on. So this would mean that they would maybe not be on the actual crosswalk, and they would be at least in that space, and then it would also be hello 15 minutes. What about if we extend that space there next to the crosswalk as you're um, going on this, we would have a sign right there, but as your drop off, because the other one you're going to have to, you know, parallel parking in a smaller spot. Um, or if you get it closer to the crosswalk. I'm saying it's going to be 18 from the crosswalk. Yeah, that's why yeah, they did those. That's, that's the why we point. lost those parking spaces. That's the whole point of the bump house because the sidelines. Well, that's what I mean. You get that, we need to get it. You get one more puppet. But we need that. Take out the, 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 the handicap and move it to the space behind it where it's near, next to the cross point. That way they can pull in there as opposed to having to move the handicap on. Yeah. To a different location. A different location. That's all. I have, this, these are the suggestions that, yeah. that have been brought up so far. Um, are there more? No, that's okay. pretty much it. Um, adding a couple more of the two-hour parking signs instead of just one at one end of the street and another at the other end might help people realize that they're parking in a space that's supposed to be for two hours. But you know, most of the people that park for longer are people who are local and work on the street, so they full well know that they're parking right. in a two-hour spot. So do we want to, so it seems to me, what is it, it's October, and we're going to have winter, we think, usually we do, in December, in December, yep. and um, a lot of times winter ends up wiping away a lot of the, we start with a clean slate again in the spring, in terms of lines. Um, so I'm wondering, is it, would it be worthwhile to have a few people work on this through the winter rings? Suggestions back to the board before. Well, we didn't repaint this year. Right, because they stayed. used. They well, used. Some, I thought some of it. Yeah, the company came back. Yeah, yeah, they came back. That was part yeah. of the contract because they. Yeah. They didn't do the the parking spaces though. They just no, didn't. No, they didn't need to be. Right. No, just crosswalks. And <laughs> they did those early enough where the paint. They did the everything else, the crosswalks and stuff, late uh, in the year, and the paint didn't stick. So there's two, I think there are two things. There's like the physical parking, mm -hmm. and then there's also the enforcement. Mm -hmm. And so, and that's what Danny always talks about when he's here. So I think we could certainly have a, maybe there's a group of people who tackle both, but physically it doesn't make sense to reassign any parking lots until next spring, because mm -hmm. we're not gonna paint anything this fall. Parking spaces, yeah. Parking spaces, so then, then the other question is, even if we put a 15 minute loading sign, right. what does that mean if there's no enforcement for it? What does two hours mean if there's no enforcement for it? So that brings me to the point of enforcement. So probably more than three times a week on my way in at 7.30 in the morning, there's a uh, box truck, like a 20, what are they, 26 footer? The, yeah, um, is parked. Uh, the wrong way, facing the school, um, delivering product to businesses on Main Street. So they're they're violating our ordinance by parking the wrong way on the wrong side of the street in a no parking, a clearly marked no parking zone, with a company logo on the side of their truck. Okay, so part of me says half of me says, oh, I could call the company and complain about the delivery driver violating our ordinance and um, potentially violating the law and, or, and then risk him, get, him or her getting reprimanded, fired, and therefore products don't get delivered to our businesses on Main Street. That's kind of what goes through my mind. So, or we can be hard-nosed stop, give him a ticket, call his company, say the driver is violating our ordinance, parking in a no parking zone, um, trying to get products to our businesses on Main Street. So that's, that's what I wrestle with. 
But in, in the in the fifteen minutes in, in that I have before work, and it and I'm not trying to single out any business. It happens all along Main Street, whether they're parked one way or the other. They're getting products to our businesses on Main Street. Um, I can't I can't really speak to employees or patrons or whatever. They're gonna just they're they're the general public. They're gonna just do what they do on the parking stuff. But the, the delivery vehicles is what I see as well as people parking in the parking zone. So I you know, enforcement's great. I don't think we have the capacity to to enforce the parking yet as it is right now. So we'd have to beef something up, hire somebody to do track to do parking enforcement. We can't tie up the officers we have on shift to do parking enforcement. I agree it's a problem. I just don't know, and I agree that there's probably solutions out there, but what are they, what are we willing to do? And how many people are we willing to piss off? So in the past, we have, and I'm not saying we should do this right now, but in the past we have had uh, an animal control officer who was also willing to do um, parking enforcement, and that worked, I thought, reasonably well. Yeah. It's possible that in the future we'd have another person who was interested in doing parking enforcement. I don't know. Um, I, I think we can we can probably fit it in in between. Just it would be sporadic, you know, when you're on town time, going down there, walking down. Uh, but <clears throat> the problem we have right now is, you know, we're not sure where the parking is going to actually be. But, but right parking. now it's designated where it is. Right. 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 Mm -hmm. But there's been some. Some things have been up in the air as to you know, what should we enforce, what's going to be changed later down the road. But even if it's changed later down the road, right now, what's laid out is laid out. Okay. I okay. Think. And I also think a soft, right. I think a soft start could be okay. right warnings. Yep. For the first. I mean, we have. I think we have. Yeah, we have. We've written warnings. We've talked to businesses, shared oh. about quite a bit okay. on it as well. So I think oh, so it's the behavior changes for a little while, yeah, right. but then it goes right back to not, not really caring or not being due diligent about it. And I mean, a lot of, like, I spend a little bit of time mm -hmm. on Main Street. I see, um, and leading by example um, should be the case, and it's not. Will, will having the, the bridge in next summer make any difference? The Is what? there enough parking over across the lot? Mm -hmm. um, it's it's going to relieve it, but it's yeah. not going to make it's not going to change it significantly. I mean, there's going to be four or five more spots over there, and there'll be people that will park over there, there instead of on Main Street. But I think it's great that we have a parking problem because that means our business. I mean, are, yeah, but the, yes, I continue to believe that we don't have a parking problem as much right. as we have a walking problem. Yeah. I never have trouble finding a place to park up by St. Norbert's when I need to drive to the store. Mm -hmm. Or up at Allegiant during the day. Yeah, I mean, there, yeah. there are places to park There's as long as you're willing to walk. 25 spaces over here. Mm -hmm. The majority of the issues come in when, because we have no place for delivery vehicles to stop and park or, you know, do and what they need to do. Walking. And that's an everyday thing, and that's just, yeah. yeah, and we don't we don't really have any place for them to pull over. So that's also not unique to Hardwick. No. Like, no. you can go almost anywhere and see delivery no. trucks have to just make do. And it happens, and yeah. Sometimes they just double park in the travel lane. Yeah. I mean, they yeah. do that here once in a while, too. But when the, when the two-hour spaces are shifting, um, very often, there it's, relatively seamless for UPS and FedEx anyway. They managed to find a spot that where they can just like get into a two spot thing. They come and go and that happens. Um, the bigger issue is that people are persistent on parking in the intersection where we have no parking. Mm -hmm. And because they can, they continue to do that. Is there any data on the economics <coughs> of hiring somebody to, you know, do meter maids pay for themselves? 
No, we're not going to have meters. I know we don't have meters, but, but, right, but take care of those. just as a just as a term for somebody whose only job is to they don't. They, I, I think they can, they they. I think the cost of the meters, the cost of the. No, I'm not. I'm meters, not really no, suggesting not meters. meters. Oh. Okay, I'm just thinking of that as a job. Somebody whose job is to be downtown. Oh, like they generate their own. By ticket you, revenue. By ticket revenue, would they? Slippery slope right there. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, no, if, I got, if I got paid by how many tickets I wrote, <laughs> <laughs> so more tickets. It's like being paid by the four foot. But yeah. you know, as as a practical matter, you know, in the profession, do they pay for themselves? Probably if it's a city, if there's like enough volume, and if it's enforced enough, give them a big enough, yeah, number of blocks. But to the problem is, is that we're it's not just the meter maid that would be hiring; it's also hiring somebody to tow somebody. If they didn't pay for it, and keeping track of that license plate number, boots, and or having uh, impound yard, mm -hmm. yeah, and yeah. And, and, and but maybe we could just work on task force. The little group can work on signage because if you're new to Harbeck, it is you don't know where to park. It's like there's one little sign, but we could totally be directing people up here. We could be directing people up to St. Norbert's better. Like that wouldn't be super high cost. Yeah, there's there's a, a there there are not a lot of signs out there. I feel like there are a lot of signs. It's not. not I don't think for it's for just general people coming well, to Harvard. That's life. I mean, yeah. it's, yeah. It's, I think it's, it's the locals. When you're not from here, you don't. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I just. I spent so, a lot of time. So what do we want to do tonight? I want to move us along. Can we paint the curb yellow? Where the lights like are? It's it's all right, one thing. You got, you got any yellow paint? Okay. <laughs> at least we're, we're not yeah. in the we're at least we're not in the pandemic where you couldn't get paint. Just a visual <laughs> reminder. I don't know about that. Oh really? You don't know if you can get yellow paint? I could shock you tonight about how much a new dump, dump truck's gonna cost. Oh. Okay. We're not talking about the dump trucks. We're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> we want to right, let's paint the curve. Paint, paint the curve. Here, here's to painting the curve. All right. Cheers. <laughs> painting the curve. All right. So that's one Try thing that. we can do, and then what? And then what? Sounds like a reminder to coming to deciding about changing up parking oh, for okay. next spring. And then we were gonna change the handicap spot to a 15 mm -hmm. minute. We can do that, but Mike's suggesting that you also move that up one place, I think. He thought it would be easier for a delivery truck to scoot in if there wasn't in, in the place uphill from the current. Because right have. now when they're, they park, they're parking on that space anyway, and they're taking up, you know, the, as you've seen. Yeah, the bigger trucks up. are, but this yeah. is sometimes this is me needing to drop something off right. at yes. the store that I can't carry from St. Norbert's, mm -hmm. um, you know, or Mark needing to drop something, you know, so it's more Somebody like flower basket number. needs to stop in, pick up this thing and take it and not have to I don't think it would circle. make that much of a difference if we move that space back. I'm just saying for bigger oh. trucks, it'd be easier for them to get in. Oh, and yeah. Yeah, I mean, they, use that as well. yeah the big box trucks that deliver to the Chinese restaurant are always going to do whatever they they just do. So I wonder if we could do an incentive program to the businesses in the downtown and like do a competition. Like if your employees don't get a parking ticket throughout the course of the month, like throw them a party or something. Because that's what's going to happen. Yeah. Because people are going to come to my office and they're going to bitch and complain that they got a parking ticket because they had to park to go to work on Main Street. I can already see it happening. So, so you're thinking, let's create an incentive program. To park. Yeah. Find places to park that aren't, like here, these parking spaces, mm -hmm. after 5 o'clock, wide open. Yeah. Um, all and yeah, there lots of places. Right. Yeah. And, and I'm, I'm not saying, like, we need to try a bunch of different things. Yeah. Like, I'm not trying to, like, place blame on any one person or one business, or one group of people in town, you know, I'm just like, we gotta try, so we gotta try some things, mix it up. All right, so we're gonna paint a curb yellow. Yep. We're going to, or we're, change, we're just changing the handicap to a 15 minute? 
loading and unloading or 15 minutes? Whichever, I don't know. 15 minutes is pretty good. Loading, unloading is. People are going to push the 15 minute. So I, loading and loading is like, there's no time limit here. It's just loading and unloading. Yeah. Like, I, I, if I saw 15 minutes, I'd be like, ah, I got 45. <laughs> if I saw loading and unloading, I'd be like, oh, I got to get out. That's not me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, Gotta buy the sign. So what about, but isn't the handicap day. also painted on the mm -hmm. pavement? So it's not as easy as just changing the sign. Uh, that's... How do you. You can pull the sign post, right? No, but it's painted no, on the sign. Painted on the ground. No, it's just painted over it. The handicap symbol's on the. Oh, it is? Yeah. Oh, because of the state of that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Won't winter take you? Hey, bring your kids out there's crayons. Yeah. You could just paint over it with black paint. Stay. Okay. Cracked it. I don't know. Start with the yellow curve, please. Okay, just yellow curve. That's it for now? Yeah. Okay. That'll be something. Okay, yellow curve for now. Okay, and sounds we good. We still have to order a 15 minute or loading and loading sign data. I got my own one. You might. You report back on the availability of a loading and unloading or a 15 minute sign. Well, you can get get those. It just takes a few weeks. Do we want to get him ordering one? Up to you. Uh, I don't care. I'm not going to. Let's do it. Oh, he's going to do it. Put that on your list of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> What's it? <laughs> ordering it signed. Loading and unloading. OK. I'm going to move us on. Item 2, select board to sign the downtown vibrancy fund letter of attestation. So this is related to the, um, the downtown vibrancy program, which is a grant program that is for the designated downtowns, 24 designated downtowns in the state. Um, so we'll be receiving a $25,000 grant. This is the first year for it. Yeah. Um, it's not in statute yet, but we hope that it will get there. But this is just part of acknowledging that it's the program is for the designation of the downtown. And our, the Hardwick Downtown Partnership is planning to use it to hire an uh, executive director. Great. Have a paid part-time position. Somebody who's going to do a lot of that sort of work and organizing and Great. foundation building stuff. Do we need a, we need a motion, Cherry? Or we just need to sign? We just yeah, need both. A, I get a motion that the uh, motion to approve the downtown vibrancy fund letter of attestation. Second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. So we do we have here to carry this, right? Yeah. So we sign. So the next one is item three, select board to review and authorize town manager to sign the payment agreement with Casella for removal of the dirty dirt at the yellow barn site. Um, um, sorry, I should provide the background here. Um, so, Yellow Barn project. The barn itself is actually going remarkably well. It was lifted up, they did a new foundation, they put it back down, it's like moving ahead. The new accelerator building that's next to it, there's fill that was placed there over the years that was unsuitable structurally to build on. Our original, um, our original environmental test showed that that fill was also not contaminated soil, so we thought we were okay. But then it turned out that in our plan, it said we had to test it again when we were excavating. And so when we tested it again, some of it was shown to be contaminated. It's quite a lot of soil. We were trucking it to Coventry. Um, because, because when you have dirty dirt, you have to send it to Coventry, so it goes to Lake Nymphomagog and not to Lake Champlain, I guess. So, um, anyway. Well, it's used as cover. For it's example. used as daily cover. Mm -hmm. So there's a whole bunch, Sherry got pulled into this a little bit, because we need to work for this whole waste district on this, too. Okay. So, um, thank you for your help, because that was really good. Well, I think it saved us about, what, 200 
removal of the soil contamination of the Gale of Iron. And any items? And project. Any yeah. items related to the removal of contaminated soil associated with the Yellow Barn? Project. Well, <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Second. Amanda, did you get enough of that? To, yeah. Okay. She's good. Yeah. So, uh, any more questions or discussion on that? So, all in favor, please say aye. 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 And I'm going to abstain um, because one of our grant um, awards requested that I abstain from any votes on the yellow barn. So, and another another so example of a project moving forward. That's true. It is definitely mm -hmm. moving down. We need to keep moving this forward, and it's a very um, well liked project at all levels through the state, um, and it's exciting. So, mm -hmm. I I still I'll always be a you know. I'll always have conversations about the yellow barn in town. People want to have conversations, so yeah. But this is good for our book. Yeah, it's going along pretty well right now. <clears throat> um, thank you all. So, item four: select board to authorize SE Group proposal for the second phase of the pedestrian bridge and park. Um, so we we didn't do that. No, because it changed after the flood. They had to do a change. We had just the draft. Of the oh, first okay. one. So this is the second version. The existing conditions have changed. Yep. They revised the existing conditions. This is really for um, the design of the bridge um, and the design of the bridge, bridge project and permitting. So this is that next step An engineer. to get shovel ready and engineering. Um, and does, then, does this get us from where we are today? To getting bids yes. that we can choose from. They will. They will. Um, and how many years are they going to take to do that? This is going to all happen before the end of 2024. Yeah, it has to. Yeah. It has to the bids, the project. The project. Oh yeah. Okay. Does the group understand that? The bridge. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, they do now. And we yeah. have. Yeah. Are yeah. You sure? Yeah. We have the bridge. Um, we yeah. also have That's the okay. bridge. Yeah. All right. No, he, he understands it yeah, okay. he, um, regularly again. Mm -hmm. So with this proposal of the phase two, it's um, 94000 to bring the bridge project to bid mm -hmm. to SE Group for permitting. And then there's uh, 45000 in the park project design and permitting. We're going to bring those together with a ten thousand dollar contingency for one hundred forty nine thousand um, dollars, and then we also have Bridge Brothers is a bridge manufacturing company, and they're willing to sell us a stamped set of drawings for the bridge engineering that we can submit to USDA so we can get this bridge approved. So we need to get approval that this will be okay. Um, for the, the engineering and design of the bridge. And engineering of the bridge, not design. SE Group's doing it. They're working with Bridge Brothers. So this is us this is what we we kept running up against a wall with. Um, this engineering of the bridge. Because SE Group is a is a landscape architect, which we were instructed to hire from the beginning of the project. And then we ran into some problems with that. Um, and then, so hopefully this will get us a little closer. And then there was supposedly just one place on earth where you could get the bridge that we've selected yeah. in our uh, public engagement process. Mm -hmm. But apparently Bridge Brothers has been out there all the time and they can also help us with Yeah. So, We'd like to get so we're moving back. we're moving fast rather quickly here. So who's so still involved in so Sherry clearly? Myself, Tracy. 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 Yeah. Okay, so the layman and, and okay. Bill, the uh, the engineer engineering ventures. So, so we're hoping that the fabrication of this bridge, everyone's schedule right okay. um, the fabrication of this bridge will happen from when we finalize the permitting and get everything good to go. This will happen starting in June. 
and it'll be delivered in September and we'll place it um, we'll place it bridge installation is scheduled for mid to mid October into November next year so a year from now we'll be placing that bridge okay did the, if everything goes well did the flooding yes of that yes. area help or hurt it, um both well it had Same effects way. it took effect it, it created some new conditions the existing conditions it created some new ones so they kind of had i wouldn't say they had to go backwards but it, it also kind of changed um well it, it created a problem of that retaining the south main street retaining wall in the park because before that i would call a double foundation that was lower mm -hmm. was holding that wall up and if you look at that wall there's a footing on top of the footing and there's a big crack in that wall now. and that's not necessarily part of the bridge but it's tied into the abutment around the corner mm -hmm. and that's a very tight area to work so we want to do that the, the restoration of that park on the main street side the bridge abutment and eventually setting the bridge we want to do that all in one shot makes perfect sense right and I'm hoping that some of that work can be reimbursed, reimbursable by fee. That's going to be a little complicated. And I, if it's going to slow things down, we have to decide if it's even worth the fight. But that retaining wall is going to be an issue. It's, believe it or not, there's a not lot. not be an issue going forward. If the crack is there. Yeah. It's, it's been affected, so. There's a lot going on right there. So, I just want to, I don't know, I mean, I want, I definitely want this project to go forward and probably this is the only way to keep it moving forward, but I just want to express that I feel like that same schedule that you just offered, yeah. at one point was the 2023 schedule and it was the 2024 schedule. It was. And I, and I feel like that our process, the meetings that I was in with SC Group, there's just, the process kills me. It's yeah. just so unbearably, grindingly slow. Yeah. So I'm concerned it about has that. Sped up. But we just got borings done. That's true. But the boring's done. I'm also sped up. a little bit, I'm, I'm hoping that they're, the total $150,000 cost. I'm hoping most of that is being subbed out to engineers or something, because that seems like a really high permitting. cost. A lot of it's permitting Ooh. and paying engineers to get the permitting together. Okay. Because um, they've taken on engineering ventures. SC Group. They, they they sub. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's going to get it, yeah, and somebody's going to design. That's got to all be um, getting the permitting and designing the abutments. Yeah. And, and then putting together the construction documents in the bidding. Right, and taking us through it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. All necessary rules. I know. No, I know it's all yeah. necessary. I just, yeah. I hope that they're up to the task. Me too. But they've done a lot. Of, I mean, they're a big company and they've done a lot of projects. Yeah, I know. I mean, they. But ours is still. Right. Not done. Yeah, I hear you. Okay, I'm yeah. just voicing my. I just I want. To I just have to it's say it. Got much better. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right, good. I'm glad to hear that report. Much better. I mean, right. we could get really good at fixing bridges. <laughs> doing the fire with fire spray, and we could just do it ourselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, seriously. It's basically yeah. <laughs> okay. The anyway, first one I can was a motion to approve um, the phase two proposal from the S. Group. Second. Any more uh, discussion or whining? Like, <laughs> like I know. It's okay. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Next, select board reports. Um, uh, Final public meeting of the um, LBRT Regional Amenity Scoping Study. This is the how, what, how all of the trailheads will be designed in our area. It's on Wednesday the 11th, so it's a week, week from yesterday at the townhouse. It's the last public hearing 
6 p.m. Yeah. 6 p.m. Okay. Duly noted. Um, Opie and I met with uh, Ted Brady from VLCT the other day. Ted Brady and Josh. Josh. What is his name? Josh Yanfer. Hannaford. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I thought it was the first. He was the. I couldn't think of what. Yeah. Meant the housing. He used to be at ACC. ACC. Yeah. yeah. He was a commissioner. Right. Yeah. So, so they were just happened to be passing through and said, "Can we stop?" And so we had a thought a good meeting with them. Yeah. Just. I mean, Ted Brady. Yeah. Just about whatever. Well, there well, no, was about overweight trucks, trapping and. Um, Taxation, like oh, the, yeah, um, like a pooling. Um, what do you call the the tax districts that are in the community? The like when you tax yourself and add in tax increment district, that oh, sort of thing. Yeah. But there was also another part of that where they're working to get. You know, the state of Vermont gives us gives towns um, money for uh, roads and grant me. Mm -hmm. Grants an aid for road, and they just give it to you. You you say oh, we're going to abide by your standards. Yeah. They give you some money, and you work that into your roads. And VLCT is advocating that the state can do that with more things instead mm -hmm. of making us fight amongst ourselves for grants from the state. Mm -hmm. Maybe they could just allocate us some money and trust us to do the right thing. Actually, do it. Yeah, that sounds great. Does sound great. And so that was their agenda, but then we. We pretty much hit them up with our agenda. Like, mm -hmm. we have this flooding, this is what's going on, we have these big projects, we need a new town garage, you know, we just keep it. <laughs> they give us a new town garage. Laundry list. Yeah, we gave them a laundry list while they were here. Because yeah. why not? Not that they can really do anything with it. Well, but it's important for them to hear what They know about it now. Right. Yeah. They know not to come We tell everyone. Like, <laughs> yeah. All right. Are they dropping in? Yeah. Other oh, reports? Don't do a four o'clock drop in. Yeah. We old business. Mm -hmm. New business? <laughs> what you call real trip? Hatrel's got the bid for this section. Yeah. Of their what? Way. Really? Yes. It's been bid? They're, they're working. Yes. They've been working. Uh, so, from what I gather, it will be open from the townhouse all the way to Woke by this winter. Mm -hmm. Really? Uh, that for section up there is going to be in the yeah. air, probably. Yeah. There'll be a V Trans will make a report at that at the beginning of that meeting as well. Yeah. Great. What the yeah, latest they are down by Willow right Towers is somewhere in Long Air right now. So, but you can go. That's from, awesome. Yeah, you can go from Cape Brook Road now to all the way to St. Albans. So nice. I saw that they repaired by the Fisher Bridge. Yeah. So they're working this way. They're coming over the road right now. Nice. That's mm -hmm. awesome. And then there's Dirt Tech is coming this way up from Belfort Way. Yeah. So they're hoping to meet up toward Green. But the bridges are those a separate contract? No, uh, no, for the no pay from bill. Well, that's they haven't decided yet what exactly they're going to do. Oh, no, really? There's, there's been some. Yeah, there's some abutment issues there too. Yeah, yeah. yeah there's a series. Of issues. But that's a problem there. There's three bridges right there. Two, two. two. But they're two seg. Each one has two right. segments. There. There's, there's like a abutment in the middle of the river. Yeah, yeah. 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 that's great news. Thank yeah. you. Um, all right. Old I've got business. I've got some old business. Um, so FEMA asked what we want to do with the slide on School Street. Oh, yep. On uh, East Hardwick Road, East Route 16. Right. Um, what and I basically said what with the select board we haven't really decided what we want to do with that road. I do have an email here from Eno. Um, they met and had some conversation about it. So, I mean, the state geologist said the um, the rehab of that and bringing it back to where it was pre-flood is going to be over two million dollars. On who's nickel? Well, that's the thing. Do we want to? Th that's going to be a a huge fight with FEMA, uh, and I don't think they're going to want. To, I mean, I I don't think that is going to. It's that's a good use of taxpayer funds to what rebuild. Does FEMA say? 
Well, they say a lot of things. <laughs> What's the... <laughs> there are a bunch of different ideas. Yeah. Um, I can read them, but I would say that <clears throat> the majority say they want to keep it closed. Um, they're still speeding on School Street. Uh, there's a lot of people cutting through the store. Um, so we do have a plan in place. Uh, we're going to get 12 Jersey barriers and with, along with the delivery to the East Main Street Bridge in, Creeds, in North Hardwick on, on the Greensboro Bank Town Line. Um, we're going to put some there and we're going to put some at uh, the Route 16 intersection of School Street and down by the Mini Mart so they can't be moving. They, they can't be moved because people are moving them. Um, no, they're moving the uh, temporary sides. No, they're not. So, they're very strong. So, that's, that's a couple of them. And then, some suggestions here's number five. Some suggestions for dealing with school street include one, blocking off the intersection, intersection with the mini mart. Oh, well, this is making putting curbing through the center of the parking lot. So, people living half on the school street side would have to go that way to get out and the folks living on this side would have to go out 16 then they couldn't go around. Um, the longer term plan should be, well we have that um, better connections grant that we could look at um, and then working with the owners of DNL to install signage and speed bumps or speed bumps. So, um, and then define the more sidewalk areas given. So there's <coughs> there's a traffic problem associated with closing that road that we have to deal with. Um, I don't think making it one way, I don't know if that's a good idea or not. Um, like just making it one way, one lane, or I mean truck, truck traffic uses it in the during chopping season, I know a lot of farmers use it, but they can just go further up. What's the, did, did the state uh, geologist offer any opinion on the stability of what's remaining there? Like, is it going to just continue to erode? Yeah, it's really steep. I know, it's, yeah. like, I haven't been over there in a while, but the pictures yeah. show it being markedly farther into the road than Oh, it's underneath the, it's underneath the asphalt. Yeah. Yeah, it's a problem. That's why we need to prevent traffic from driving on it. I guess my question is more aimed at, like, in the long run, we is it maybe to, to our, anyway. well, right, is it maybe to our benefit to stabilize it at some point so that it doesn't just keep moving? So at some point you're going to have to. In some way, shape, or form. Right, because right. you're going to start taking away land. Right. And then they're going to come back after you anyways, as you know, the town. Well, some of that's private yeah, property. Yeah. But it's not that far from Route 16. Right. It's what, 50 feet from Route 16 to side? Yeah. So. There's a lot of good gravel underneath there. <laughs> Same <laughs> run. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely. So the it's problem is. Above my pay grade, that's for sure. <laughs> Figuring is out it possible to deal with that? Do a solution for the winter that. that Works the for, barriers, the yeah, barrier, yeah, for plowing and for access. Yeah, we're okay. Like plow. So you got you got that figured out. Mm -hmm. Longer term, so do we get a report or anything from the state geologist ultimately? So I have, I, rec I thought I got it, but I I didn't. So um, you didn't try to get I it. I requested it. it. I know they sent one to be um, Vermont Emergency Management because it was all logged under a request through the um, Emergency Operations Center. So I think it went back to that. There is another complication. It's not really our, it's not on us, it's on the East Shore Fire District, but there's a water line. They're taking care of that. They're taking care of that? Yep. That's great. Yep. But that probably means digging it. <coughs> They're going to put the water line on the, the MERS side of the road and then cross further yep. up. Yeah, great. And they, they're all set with that. I think one, just as a Hardwick resident, what I've noticed, East Hardwick resident, what I've noticed is because more people are driving through Main Street to get to East Hardwick, that um, the visibility 
and there, like, there's not a huge shoulder for trucks to turn onto from 16 onto Main Street. Yeah. And so that's getting kind of eroded because they're just like turning shit. Before, School Street was like an easy way for bigger trucks to get through. Yeah. So that's kind of getting, that corner is getting a little bit run down. And then there are those big, there's those pine trees right on the road that are, it's always a tricky spot to turn yeah. on 16. And so, to see traffic coming. Yeah, so yeah. If, if we are going to decide to have that be our main way onto 16, I think we should look at that ways to make that intersection yeah. better. I think engaging with our regional planning commission might be a good idea yeah. for this okay, one yeah. and the train. Yeah, our, yeah. Yes, our district. Yeah. That's, yeah. Which yeah, district is that? Plan before. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I'll make a point about Pine Creek before, but we yeah. can't touch them. Because the State Highway and then they're firing up off State Highway. State's not going to touch them. Yeah. And they're on private yeah. land, so yeah. you can't. You can ask the landlords to cut them down or trip them, but. Okay. That's like asking the Danny to do Oh, okay. it's not shit. Oh, I thought you were um, I didn't say that loud enough. So. Can we condemn those as, as public safety issues, those trees? Oh, jeez. <laughs> That's a. You probably could. They get raised that way. Well, yeah, it's just like, yeah. I don't want to live in a. So the hand of the government. Okay, so can we say that just yeah, for street. for right now for this winter, you guys you have a plan that's going to keep that safe and nobody's going to fall in during this winter probably. Well, and it sounds like if we could talk to the regional planning commission to come up with that, because it really is tied into Route 16, so the state should be. Yeah. They're, they're right away. They ain't going to care. Yeah. No, right. They don't care. Okay. But we could engage with the regional planning commission to come up with some solutions. As to what to do, and I can re-engage with the state geologist and see. I mean, his job is just to come out and survey it, not survey it, but look at it, document it, provide a report. But we, if possible, if we could get more guidance there, yeah, that would be. Re I think that would be really helpful. Even if we, could, if we didn't cut, if we if we didn't reclaim the current road. So we stopped it from eroding even where so it is. Cut the bank down so it's more of a slope. Yeah. That might actually be. Might help. That might, and then basically the bank would start behind Demers's shop and right. kind of, you know what I mean? Yeah, but it'd be great to have somebody look at it and. and if there's nothing going on on that side of the road all the way down to that first farmhouse on School Street. Would be. It'd be great to have somebody look at it and say, yeah, yeah. if you do that, yeah. that'll. Stop it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be. <clears throat> okay. I really think we're going to have to draw violence in there. Yeah. yeah. You, you think that's the only way to. You know, mm -hmm. It's like quicksand right at the bottom. You could yeah. You can't. If you saw it like, a couple of days after the flood, yeah. the water was just pouring out of it. I mean, it was like an eight inch busted water. I mean, it was just. Yeah. yeah. When I was traveling that road, twice a day in the 70s. Just beyond where John Hancock used to live, there was a part of the road that about every four years, they'd have to come in and repay. Yeah, Route 16. Where, where oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Just yeah. Still, right across from Belfry Road. So, yeah, yes, yeah, and still it, there. it was just kind of sliding down right. into the river, and they'd put some more pavement yeah. on and slide down. Same program. I suspect that it this is, is yeah. the same, same yeah. geological Probably. problem. Yeah. And that area you're talking about, they still do that. Yeah. Do they still? Oh, do yeah. That? Still slumps and still. Gets Eventually, good. they're going to get that pavement right down. Correct. To Start to the bottom. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, you're right. It probably is. Yeah. Yeah. I, th I don't think that's a good solution, but then <laughs> this isn't my business. <laughs> but it's incremental. Sometimes it's, it's incremental. Yeah. Sometimes right. it's easier to implement. Hey, as you go. So you had something too. I have some quick old business that I. Reached out to Lynn Gedenkin after our last meeting, mentioning that the EV station wasn't on the map, and she's working on that with Mike to make sure that the EV station is more visible. Oh, great. Well, and aren't we due for another meeting with yeah. them? And yeah, when do you want to have that? With the electric commissioners, and the, the, because we need to um, 
discuss with them the park and the bridge as well because they don't seem to know anything about that project. Okay. We made some headway today. They asked for an uh, application and two hundred fifty dollars for the site visit. Yeah. <clears throat> anyway, we need to have a meeting with them. Yeah. So when do you want to have it? I can get work I can work that in. So gosh. I'm retired. Well <laughs> what's time to a pay? Huh? I said I'm retired. What's time to a pay? Um you wanna do When's their regular meeting? <clears throat> their meetings are so on the third sure. Monday of the month at five o'clock. So their meeting is at the sixteenth at five o'clock. We have a meeting that Thursday, the 19th in October. November is the 20th, and then we have a meeting on the, just before that. Well, do we meet on the same day that they have their meeting, or do we need to do something different? I can ask if, yeah, but they're, so in the past we've done it just before, and then they resume their meeting, so we could do maybe a, a 4 o'clock meeting, because they start oh, the at 5. On the, I would say let's push it to November 20th. No? Yes? Okay, as long as it's not going to interfere with their holiday plans. You know? Okay. Yeah, I can find out. So, do you want a, to request a joint meeting prior to their regularly scheduled commissioner training? Sure. On the 20th? Okay. I noticed a big thing that Green Mountain Power put out on a porch forum about how they're helping people get rebates on electric cars and all kinds of stuff like that. Yeah, they're doing a lot of stuff that HED doesn't do. It's it, some of that HED <coughs> does do through VIPSA. Okay, I mean, I'm Most just of the rebates that are available through Efficiency Vermont are available through Heart of Electric. I was just surprised to see yeah. this, this great big long hand on the front porch for Right. Yeah. Yeah. All right, any other um, new business, old business? I have a motion to go into executive session uh, to discuss personnel issues, select board to include the town manager. So, second. And it's, oh, and we're citing um, you are now. Uh, <laughs> you, you weren't listening earlier. No, no. Um, and then, all together. All together. Amanda, can you give the citation for me for the statute yes. for that? It's 313 or something. 313. Yeah, but you'll get it? Yeah. All right, so all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries, so we go downstairs.